All right, as you can see, here we are in the city. And I'm hoping this new Fish Islands is doing a good job. And now let's go and see if we can find some depression glass. Alrighty. Got the shops. Just gonna move over here. Look at these little shops. Full of stuff. Antiques. Star Wars memorabilia. Look at that. Star Wars memorabilia. All kinds of Star Wars memorabilia. Not bad. Not bad at all. Lots of brick. As you can see, reading on my scintillator is elevated. So the whole place is slightly radioactive. But that comes from the brick. A lot of these places are open, but we can't take the camera inside, so let's go inside and see what we can find. Let's see if I can find some depression glass. Well, it looks like I got several good pieces of depression glass. I wouldn't call them amazing, but it's the best I can do for 20 bucks. In fact, it came out to $20 and one penny. The tax is what set it over. Look at this, here's a museum. I will say I am loving this eight millimeter fisheye. I'm not really sure about the um, focus, but I am certainly sure I love the way it looks. I mean, it really is kind of neat. Look at this. Only with a wide angle, 167 degree fish eye do you get something quite like this. Amazing. So we'll, we'll get some of this depression glass back to the lab, test it out and see what it looks like. There's not too much street art here in the city. There is a little. It's sort of interesting that with this lens, I can see it in a whole new light. Though I don't think I have the focus right in this thing. I think this is better focus right here. You think so? Look at that. Alright, so there's the food being eaten. And there's a spectrum being taken. And there it is. And as you can see, almost nothing's showing up at this point. Virtually nothing. And the reason is because it's it's really hard to detect anything with a four cubic centimeter cesium iodide detector, but that's expected. Oops, probably everybody's wondering why I have the best that 1990s can offer sitting beside, you know, reasonably modern day fun. But anyway, there you go. Nice uh, ice latte is pretty good, to tell you the truth. So we'll get back and test some of this out in the lab and see what we get. All right, so here's one of the items I got. It's kind of hard to hold a camera and like show you this at the same time. So like I'm kind of, you know, fudging it. Look at this little guy. It needs to be cleaned up. It's got dust all over it. That's why it has that kind of like milky sort of look to it. But, but that looks pretty cool when I do that. But anyways, you can see it's getting almost a thousand counts per minute on the Geiger counter, right? Not bad. Uh, it's pretty safe. I've got a couple pieces that were like this. There was one really nice piece that was big, but it was like $40. And I, I love you guys, but I don't love you $40. Dude, I put like, I put Google ads on my videos and I make like a dollar. So, I mean, honestly put, it's not worth it financially speaking. Um, but I just like to collect this stuff. So I really thought about doing it and I wanted to show you guys something cool. But anyway, in the end, I just ended up with this little guy right here. Can we break a thousand counts per minute? No, we're not going to break a thousand counts. So I'll go back and test all of this stuff and blast it with some light and maybe take a couple cool photos under the UV and see what it looks like. God, isn't this lens awesome? All right, so I'm uh, headed home here. You can see um, either this is time lapse or I drive like hyperdrive speed. But anyway, I don't live in this city, so it's a bit of a drive back to where I do live. And anyway, I just thought it'd be kind of fun to put this on here. Uh, I do love this lens. By the way, looking back at it, I now see that this lens has some darkening issues. 
um, some contrast issues. I don't know how to put it exactly. Could just be camera settings that I had a little bit wrong. We'll figure that out later. This lens is really basically meant for me to do astrophotography. So I just thought it'd be fun to use it today because it has this neat, like, you know, curvature thing that it does. It's a fisheye lens, 8 millimeter, 167 degrees field of view. So anyway, um, just about done here. And we'll see what this does in my lab after the long, 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 long drive home. All right, so we're back. Let's take a look at what we got. First off, I got this little piece right here. Let's kind of stick it right there so you can see it. And it's like an ice cream dish or something. It's hard to keep this in focus. Um, it glows pretty well overall. In fact, I'd say this is the hottest, strongest, most glowy piece that I received. The second piece is kind of interesting. It's actually a um, saucer and cup duo. Let's kind of put this down here and move these over so you can see them. The cup has this nice kind of six-sided shape to it and the saucer, well that's what the saucer looks like. See? Kind of has that spider web sort of thing going on. It's really rough around the edges too. You can cut yourself really easily. So, <clears throat> those are the two pieces whoops, that I got. Now let's put them under the black light and let's hit them with the detectors and see how they fare. Alright, so we have two detectors here. There's a Geiger counter right there. And this right here is a 1 inch sodium iodide thallium dope scintillation counter. This is a Ludlum model 44-2. This is connected to a rate meter. And you see we're at about a thousand counts per minute. Cut the sound on. Cut the sound off on the times 10 mode. So that means that each one of these 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 is times 10. So it's 0, 1000, 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000 counts per minute. Let's put it on turtle, which is slow response, and you'll see the dial will slowly head to about maybe 1100 counts per minute, something like that. So this is one of the lowest backgrounds in my entire house. 22 counts per minute, 26 counts per minute. Yeah, by far this room is probably the lowest background. So anyway, um, this is a Inspector uh, EXP Plus, so it's a pancake detector, see, right there. It'll detect x-rays, gamma rays, alphas, uh, betas. This guy right here only detects gamma rays and reasonably potent x-rays. So anyway, let's, uh, let's see what these dishes look like. So first up is the candy dish, the ice cream dish, whatever you want to call it. Now, as you can see, it's mostly an alpha producer, because if you flip it over, you get almost nothing. It's an alpha producer, for the most part. And you get alpha, beta, gamma, and all of them. Connecting both detectors to it, we'll let this one build up, you'll see that the, the gamma detector over here is actually reaching almost 2,000 counts per minute. And in fact, it looks like it's going to pass that. So it's like, in fact, it will look about more than that. So overall, this sample is putting off about a thousand counts per minute of gamma according to this detector. That's what it's detecting. It's actually probably putting off way more than that. They're just not getting detected. And we're, we're at 737 counts per minute, approaching the 800 mark. Let's see if we cross the 800 mark. Ah, uh, looks like we're going to hit it. 815. 849. Okay, looks like we're going to hit the 900 mark. Close. So almost 900 counts per minute. Let's say 880, something like that. And 1,000 counts per minute in this guy right here. They're almost equal numbers, which is kind of funny since this one has such a lower background normally. And it's coming from the, the uranium, which is in the glass. The uranium is decaying. And the decay progeny that come from the uranium are producing uh, beta and gamma and x-ray and stuff, while the actual uranium itself is producing alpha. And there's some other alpha producers in there as well. But you can tell that this dish is definitely radioactive. And that's not a harmful amount, honestly. I know people are going to be like, what do you mean it's not harmful? It's not radiation, it'll kill you, blah, blah, blah. That's not harmful. There's many things out there that are much more radioactive, like this camera lens. See what I mean? Much, 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 much more radioactive. So anyway, let's take a look at the next dish and see what it looks like. All right, so here it is. The dish and the, and the, uh, the, the, the cup, if you like, and the saucer. We'll start with the saucer. 
I recall the saucer as I tested it a few minutes ago not being that hot. So wait till that number cuts down. Okay, so we've let the, the, the detector like calm back down to normal. And you get like 150, 180, something like that in this dish. This dish is not very hot. In fact, it, all, it barely, barely, barely makes the um, gamma detector do anything. Like the gamma detector barely even blinks. I've already tested it, so you just trust me on that one. The, um, it, the dish doesn't glow very brightly either. Uh, the little cup here is a little better. It gets a bit better, but not by much. Even the, the gamma detector only gets a couple hundred counts per minute off of it. Not much of anything. And it's not going to get much of anything, and the reason is because this little cup's not that high in uranium. We'll put the base up against it, we'll probably get the highest reading of all. Yeah, not much. So let's put them under the black light and see what they look like underneath that, alright? Alright, you can see they glow a little bit, but not a vast amount. So let's put the brighter UV light on them and see what we get. There we go. It was weird. My light cut off for a second there. And as you can see... That's weird. It keeps, like, dying. They don't really bright glow... What the hell? They don't really glow that brightly, do they? They're not the brightest glowing that I've ever gotten before. Now, this guy right here, the candy dish, vastly outperforms the other. As you can see, when you put the black light on it, it vastly outperforms the other one. Um, it has a nice, healthy glow, even from above right here. The other dish, well, the cup glows, right? But the saucer just doesn't really put out that much. It has to have the black light almost directly on it. It's definitely uranium glass but not very strong uranium glass. The candy dish, not candy dish, I'm sorry, I keep saying candy dish for some reason. The um, ice cream, dessert, whatever you want to call it dish is much brighter. So we'll take a couple quick photographs here and toss a few of them up so you can get a good look at what it looks like. But all in all, I say this was a pretty good find. These weren't too bad. It's hard to get really good stuff unless you want to pay a lot of money. They had some really good pieces there, but they were these little $5 and $6 pieces all of a sudden become $60 and $70, $100 when they look really, really nice. They had a little uranium girl. She was only like maybe, maybe that big, a little tiny thing, made of uranium. And she was like $50, $60. Bucks. So like, you know, they, they, they specifically charge you for, for the stuff that looks better. I mean, obviously, it's the way that works. But they used to put uranium in, in dishes, and people used to eat off of them, and these guys right here probably came in a box of soap or oatmeal or something mixed with the food and other stuff. And that's what people did back in the 50s when everything was wonderful, happy, Dick and Jane, and apparently extremely toxic, and nobody knew. There you go.